today, we're going to install the battery. Welcome back to the channel and today we uh, are going to be installing our battery. We've got a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery that we're going to be putting on our tongue box and uh, then we'll hook up the rest of our electrical and give the old trailer a test out for the lights, fan, refrigerator, all that good stuff. So let's get started. So the first thing I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test out the uh, battery here make sure that we've got a good charge and I don't know if you can see that but we'll get it up there so let's see what we have 12.8 volts so we're sitting pretty good nice so we'll go ahead and uh, take a look see how we're gonna get this mounted and we'll put it in the tongue box get it fastened down and then we'll get some electrical stuff going so inside the tongue box, I've got a couple of uh, battery tie-down strap holders here, and we're going to go ahead and get those fastened into place. I think I'll just go ahead and through bolt those, unless I've got some uh, self-tappers. They're not going into the steel frame, just going through the box. And then the, uh, the box came with some little quarter-inch plastic strips that would normally you put down your sticky tape battery rests on that but we're gonna go with something a little bit beefier I think so I got to cut one more of these and we will be placing that uh, somewhere somewhere like this on both sides here and uh, battery set on that our strap will be able to go all the way around and uh, sit on that pretty nice so that's what we're gonna do let's get her done all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap my holes for my battery straps, and uh, that way we can insert a bolt. Go ahead and through bolt those. Make sure it bolts fit. Beautiful. Now we're ready to start bolting it down. So I'm just going to use some uh, lock washers and uh, just a couple of nuts. I might trade those out for some nylon lock nuts when I uh, head back to the store. But that's what I have right now, so I'm going to go ahead and attach these. We'll uh, go ahead and get our strap in here, and then we'll worry about placing our little plastic pieces to set our battery on. Alright, so we've got our strap set down. We've got things bolted in place. I've cut my little plastic sticks half inch thick and they're about eight and a half inch long so we're gonna probably tape those down somewhere somewhere about right there and that battery will sit right on there we can strap her down call that good alright so let's clean that up get some tape on it stick it down and set that battery in place Alright, so we're just about ready. So I've got my plastic pieces, got my 3, uh, 3M VHB tape on, and uh, got a couple of little lines marked where I want to set these. All these do is just support the battery off the floor of the box and allows your strap to run underneath. So uh, I don't expect them to go anywhere. The battery's pretty heavy, it weighs like 67 pounds, I believe. So, I'm just going to go ahead and peel that tape off on both of these strips. We'll get that in place. We'll set that battery in there, strap it, and see how it looks.
All right, now we're ready to install our uh, connection here. I'm going to put that about right there, and then we'll make a little pigtail <coughs> for our connection to our cab. Just like so. Then we'll mark our holes and we'll get that fastened on. Alright, now we're starting to make some progress. We need to get some connections on here. Put that in. Get this crimped down. So that'll be for our negative. Let's go get something else. Alright, before we can uh, make our connection, I have a uh, inline fuse. It's an ATM fuse. It takes a little bit smaller. We probably use a 15 or 20 amp fuse. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and plug things in. I've already got all the connections on here. Drop that down and connect to our battery. We just install our fuse and see if things work. All right. Now we're connected to our battery from our terminal here. We've got to make our little pigtail. So, got me a couple of short pieces of wire. I have my ends. Now we just got to connect things up. So, one at a time. Good. We'll tighten that down. Make sure to put our ends here. Just like so. So let's go ahead and get this one on. about ready to plug in. Nice and watertight. And we'll put a little bit of uh, wire loom over that. Now we can put our fuse in, give everything a test. Let's hope it works. All right, let's test out some lights. Okay, so we're here in the back. Let's go ahead and uh, switch. Boom, we have par. Nice. Let's go inside. Okay, I think we'll test out the lights first. Touch. Oh, yeah. Everything's working good. Next one. Uh huh. And. Now 
Nice. So we're nice and lit up. Will our fan work? There it goes. Drawing some good air. Three and four. Turn it off. Power. And just kind of a close up of our connections. These go on and water tight. So I can leave those things connected at all times. I don't have a battery shut off switch, but I can just can disconnect these whenever I'm not needing power, or I can pull the fuse and I'm good to go. Nice, that worked. All right, let me get some wire loom on here and see what that looks like. And that's what it looks like. Nice wire loom on there. Oh yeah, nice little pigtail. Water tight. I'm liking that. Although the water the battery box is not watertight. So water can't get in there, but there are plenty of holes in the bottom for any water to get out. But we are nice. Nice and solid. One more thing to test out. Let's see if that refrigerator works. Alright now, with any luck, as soon as I plug this in. We should see some lights light up, so keep your fingers crossed. Ooh, things are working. And the compressor kicked on. It's working good. Nice. One other thing I can check while this is running. Let's go inside and see what kind of voltage this thing has now. So we've got this neat little USB deal and if I turn that on, 12.4. All right. So we were at 12.8. We won't leave that fridge running too long. Nice. All right, we've been running for about 10 minutes. We went from 70 degrees down to 42. And I've got me a nice little probe here. And the inside, when I checked it last, was 46.9. Let's double check. <laughs> now we're down to 38.8. Ooh, bad boy is working. One more test. See what voltage drop down to. And we're still at 12.4. It's like it's not drawing any power at all. That all right, that knocks a couple more things off of our uh, list. We got the battery installed, we got the little supports under the battery, we've got the uh, connectors connected to the trailer and to the battery, and our little pigtail. And we have power now running into the trailer, and the refrigerator is working fine and uh, drawing very little power. So I'm pretty tickled to death with this. All right, we have a couple more things to do before we are totally finished. And uh, hang around because we got one more thing to show you. We have the lights on here in the back. Our refrigerator is running and I have all the lights running on the inside and the fan is on high and we are down to 12.3 I 
that's working out great. Now we just have to figure out a way to charge that battery. All right, so we have everything hooked up. The battery is installed, locked down. We've got our connections to the battery and to the trailer, the cabin, and everything works. So for our charging needs, we are going to use, well, let's see, I'll just do it this way. charging needs. We'll be using a portable solar panel. So it's a hundred watt and uh, it's a briefcase style, folds open, has a uh, kickstand on it, and it's got its own little controller. So let's get this thing opened up and uh, connected. So the Zamp Solar is made here in Oregon. It's made in Bend, Oregon, American made. They're about 43 miles south of where I live. And that's the pan. Lovely. As I said, it's a briefcase style. Unlock that. Open it up. Comes complete with your controller and cables to connect to your battery. Velcro strap, and if I'm not mistaken, I can disconnect that, and plug that into a solar port, which, by the way, we do have. So we need to get this connected to our battery box, and then we'll be able to plug that right in. We're golden. Alright, so let's get that fitting on that battery box. So as we did with our 12 volt connection, we're going to go ahead and do with the solar power. We're going to go ahead and put a hole about right here, and uh, then we'll get that wired up. Now with all of our connections made, we're ready to set up the solar panels. So when you set these up, you have to uh, calibrate it a little bit, depending on the battery type. So they have lithium, deep cycle, and AGM, and I think there's one more, and default is AGM. So no setup necessary on my part, we'll just go out there, let down the kickstand, run the wire, plug it in, and see if we're getting a good charge. So, let's do it. Let's go see what it's doing. So currently it's telling us that the uh, solar panel is working. And uh, it's charging. You see the little flashing indicators up here at the top. Pulling in 3.4 amps. 13 volts battery. So to make sense of what I'm seeing here on our charge controller, 
is according to our chart. If the red light is on and the blue light is on and the green light is on, then we are on absorption charging. All other lights are off. So our unit is working as it should. And we are charging. We'll leave this out here for a while, get that battery up to par, and then we'll come back and check on it. So as we come inside and we check our little meter here, whoop, turn the light off, we are at 13.3 volts. And something else I just realized, and I didn't know this until, until just now. I turn the light on, and if I press and hold that button, Freaking lights dim. I didn't know that. How cool is that? Wow. I had no clue. Look at that. Wow, a little, uh, little bonus for me. Now it makes me wish I had uh, <laughs> installed one of those switches over here in my box so I could dim these bad boys down. Well, might be something to look into. All right, I am happy with that. Our solar panels are working. They give you 15 feet of cable comes right into my box and it's charging the battery oh man I'm stoked all right one more sneak peek before we put it away the Sun is going down we have fires all around us so it creates a haze in the sky. So I'm not getting the sun I normally would. I'm only drawing 2.6 amps, 4.7 amp hours. That's pretty good. 13.8 volts. So no power on in the trailer. Sun's going down, so we're not drawing that much energy. It's working though. All right, so I think we're going to call that a wrap for this video. We did get the battery installed, and we got the connections into the cabin of the trailer. So we had power going into the cabin, and then uh, to charge the battery, we ended up with going uh, Zamp, uh, Zamp Solar Power, uh, locally owned and operated and built here in Oregon. And I'm pretty excited and happy about that. It works. It works great. And uh, now we have a charging system. All these things are just little extras, not necessarily anything that you, know, that you have to have in your build, but uh, if you ever plan on going out in the boondocks for a few days, uh, it would be nice to have, right? I think I've got one more little extra thing that I'd like to add to the trailer before uh, I say it's done. Then I kind of mod it out in my own little way, and then the build will be complete. So I might have one more little video pop up. And uh, after that, I might take about a two-week break in order to get things uh, modded out and tricked out. And then we'll do a little premiere video on the finished product before we call this build complete. And it'll be a happy day, but it'll also be a sad day because then the build is over. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked this one. And if you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Uh, there will be some more videos coming up. Who knows what I'm going to do next. I know I want to do some, some more stuff. And uh, in between, well, who knows what I'll do. So stay tuned and uh, keep checking out the videos. Hopefully the videos uh, have either inspired you or helping along the way in your build, whether it's this build 
or whatever build that you're working on and giving you some good ideas. So until next time, as always, please stay tuned.